Well, on today's episode of what goes on in the scrapyard should stay in the scrapyard, we decide we need a golf cart. So in true barn fresh racing style, we have waited until not quite the last minute, but next to the last minute to try and get something together. And a pit cart would be very useful. And I just so happen to have a perfectly running golf cart ready to use. Now this prime specimen of an easy go has only been sitting here for a good number of years. And it was in mint condition when it was parked here. And by mint, I mean green colored from all that moss. That's the best way to preserve an original paint job. And you know, dirt and stuff, that helps preserve tires and keep them from cracking. So in addition to housing my prized collection of antique milk crates, this thing has just been taking up space here and basically growing hornet's nests. Now it has the ultra rare factory dump bed. And by dump, I mean it came from the dump. Oh, that tire's got to be good. Have even accumulated a couple of extra spares. Now this cart got the premium storage treatment. Not really sure what the purpose of this was. Now I'll probably jinx it, but it did ran when parked. Whew. Man, we got the remnants of a trash and leaf vacuum fan, inoperable weed eater, uh, well, some dump bee deterrent. We even got the kitchen sink. We'll try and shake out some of them brown recluse spiders before we drag it into the shop. Ding by the dun. Easy come, easy go. Now this, this could be a new hood ornament. Lots of wheels, lots of hot dog cooking sticks, and we might be able to pay for this build here with this plywood. Got ourselves an antique fire extinguisher. Hmm, some axles out of a scorpion. Ooh, random junk bucket. Is that like Anheuser-Busch? Hmm. Got ourselves a poverty weather cap. Ooh, flush mount four floor anchor. Whole bunch of pipe fittings. Whew. Look at the upholstery. Free after all those years. It's riding quite a bit higher after we got rid of most of that junk. Kind of afraid to actually look underneath the seat. So, we're gonna find out here. I don't see any bees. Well, that's cleaner than most of my vehicles. Yeah, we got that board in there for a uh, seat support. I think the original plywood's uh, seen some better days. Whew. Oh, stuff sort of moves. Oh, look at that. The motor's even free. Battery. That's questionable. Huh. Well, you gotta try it at least. I know that battery's gotta be dead, but... Yeah, she's dead. For some reason, that battery used to last like for an entire year 
and still start this thing. We'll just put the new seat in place here. Well, it looks like the greasy old air compressor gets to make a cameo. These tires hold air. At least it rolls easy. Time to start into things. We got the whole air filter assembly removed. And we found out that the battery corroded a hole through the side. So we might just get rid of all of this, consider that weight savings, and run a little pod filter there. Changing out the battery. Still got the old factory billet pine hold down system. I think these used to have an oil injection system on them, but that's long gone, so we're premixed now. Now, one of the biggest reasons why this was parked was the back motor mount. So you can see it, that's the motor mount right there, and it's supposed to be attached to that rubber isolator. It's cracked and that part's long gone. So we've had a C-clamp kind of just holding everything together here. But that C-clamp and hose clamp, those aren't rated for high speed use. Because we got to have this thing top speed rated. I mean, this is a racing cart now. That whole bed setup, that's just solid as a rock. Might need shocks. That one's got a bit of a racing camber to it. So we're praying for a miracle and trying to charge that battery up. And in the meantime, looking at what's left of the floor, which is uh, not much. Luckily, somebody has this custom piece of, uh, ooh, what is that? It's a signboard from something, a piece of aluminum. That's solid. We'll leave the mouse nest in there for insulation and sound dampening. Get some random aluminum sled parts in there. Now when you're working on a project like this, you want to make sure to leave as little room as possible for access. And to always keep things that'll hit you in the head in close proximity. Sharp edges are supposed to make you bleed. No pain, no gain. No tetanus, no transport. So there's the old motor mount where it completely cracked. Now since this is kind of part of the frame that runs over to the other side of the motor, we can't just unbolt it there and fix it outside of the cart. So we got a piece of angle iron here, drilled a hole in it, and we're basically just going to kind of scab this onto the inside like that and just weld it up. Something kind of like that. 
Yeah, don't worry about the gaps. We'll just fill that in. Well, it might need a little bit of persuasion. Well, there it is. Now, this is the original bolt, but we're using the rubber gasket off of an old wheel cylinder off the deuce as the new motor mount because the old ones were shot. Oh, yeah. Got that old piece of radiator hose jammed in there. That's better than new. Now that we've spent too much time fixing that problem, we're going to see if it actually runs. Got to drain out all that non-gasoline. Never seen gas turn that color before. Well, there's the metal pickup line. And wow, is it clogged. All that wasted horsepower. Trying to pull the carb here. And I forgot about this repair. The ear cracked on the generator starter. Rebuilt. I forgot about the compound use of zip ties trying to keep this throttle shaft together. Well, that's just the choke shaft. I guess it doesn't really matter. Hey, what do you want? Go get some mice. Now, being that, I didn't even try to run this thing first, and we just went through all that effort to get the carburetor out. I'm sure it's going to be spotless inside. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be spotless inside. <laughs> well, yeah, pretty much. The jet's clear. Even that looks pretty nice inside. We'll give it a quick once over while we're in there. Spotless. Wow, that spark plug's not even fouled, which is good because this is an odd size. Now another benefit to fixing that motor mount, it was letting the entire motor shift over this way and the center distance on the clutches was getting shorter as a result. So when we put it back together, we pulled it over as far as it could go to get the clutches back to where they need to be and get some lost top end back. I mean, this thing's already pretty sketchy at speed because everything's worn out and the shocks don't work. All right, got some fresh gas in there. We have the wrong size cannon filter sort of jammed onto the air intake. Just need a fresh battery. Try and fire this thing up. All right. We'll be optimistic and put the choke on. No immediate smoke. Moment of truth. <laughs> All right, we'll crank her until we see if it can pop. Maybe you should prime the carb. All right, we got some fuel in it this time. Oh yeah, by the way, so this is the night before we're supposed to be leaving for the super sled shootout. And, you know, not wrenching on a sled, trying to get a haggard old golf cart going again. Gotta have your priorities. Sweet. We even got the custom reupholstered seat on there. And it might not look like it, but that actually is washed off. 
that's permanent mildew, not uh, temporary. Well, don't worry about that. So, of course, it came down to the last minute, getting everything loaded up and ready to head up to the Super Sud shootout. Made it up there, got everything unloaded, got camp set up, you know, nothing but the best of accommodations for barn fresh racing, of course. Was able to run, put down some decent times, just get some experience. I mean, basically, wasn't planning on trying to set the world on fire, but was really glad to see a lot of other people out there running what they brung. Now, when Barn Fresh Racing shows up, you know, we only have the finest in cuisine. And that cuisine, for me, is fried Spam sandwiches with some onions and some, you know, Kraft Singles cheese generics. Oh, the best. But the sleds ended up running throughout the entire weekend, made it without any mechanical mayhem. You know, we had quite a bit of tuning to get through. And I mean, doesn't everybody change clutches at midnight? was able to lay down some of the faster times that well that I've ever ran up there and we certainly had the most classy golf cart on the premises all oh, the old barn fresh Bentley is still rolling doing its job so far now amazingly enough the old easy slow made it through the whole weekend of driving around and pit duties however on the return trip the old bed which had hung in there for many years out in the elements, finally gave up, and it basically disintegrated on the way home, sort of when it kind of rubbed on the trailer. I think the lack of shocks and, you know, the harmonics of the rough uh, turnpike just kind of combined to shred the bed.